Hello learners, welcome back to the course on labor welfare and industrial relations. We move to the next lecture of this module where we were discussing workers participation in management. We look into workers committee. We have tried to introduce uh, this topic in the previous lectures. Today we will look into greater detail of works committee, we will also look into the joint management council. If you recollect, if you have gone through the previous lecture, you will see that uh, what is the relevance of JMCs, joint management councils we have seen, what is the relevance of works com committee we have seen. Now let us look into the actual uh, reality of what the works committee is all about and what do you mean by the joint management council. I am Dr. Abraham Sirlisek, I am an assistant professor at the School of Business, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. When you look into the worker participation management specifically from the work committee or the works committee point of view, let us understand these two segments clearly or these two committees or organization clearly. One is the works committee and another is the joint management council. When you look into the works committee and joint management council, they are the most important structures in industrial relations. It has got that uh, you know image now. When you are looking into these two segments, I am uh, discussing first collectively both of them. The term works committee here also known as work council or labor management committee specifically. So, there are different words or terminologies associated with these works committee, different names associated with works committee. Let us say if you are hearing works committee, please understand it is synonymous to work council. It is also synonymous to let us say labor management committee etc. So, all these things be it works committee, be it work council or labor management committee, it refers to an organizational structure in which the representatives of management and employees work together to address the critical issues, workplace issues and to enhance general working conditions. We have seen this, I just wanted to underscore the relevance again of the two fundamental blocks when it comes to the industrial relations. That is on one side you have the management or the, the employer and on the other side you have the employees. So, all the paraphernalia that comes with the employees, let us say the employee corporations, trade unions etc. on one side, all the other you know set of people or set of entities that come in the other side, let us say management, let us say employer, their, their federations, their corporations etc. all those take the other side. So, this works committee has actual representative or representation from both these denominations. So, the idea and design of works committee might differ slightly, you know, depending on the nation, depending on the economy, depending on the industry and even uh, labor laws that are applicable in that particular area. So, when you look into the essence of these committee to promote cooperation and communication between management and employees has been vital for you know the creation of something like a, a works committee or a joint management council for that matter. When you specifically look into JMCs, joint management councils provide a platform for debating and resolving issues at work. You know not only the, the primary aim, yes it is to resolve issues at work, but it also enables you or it also facilitates uh, you know the worker or the employer in raising morale and productivity and also becomes instrumental in improving the working conditions. So, when you look into both this work committee and the joint management council, they are categorically the most important structures in industrial relations. They aim to promote effective communication and cooperation between employers and employees as I have already mentioned. They contribute to a harmonious work environment. Uh, they bring in uh, uh, you know positive industrial relations altogether. Employers actually should embrace these structures to achieve organizational success. Now, when you look into a works committee, let us start from the definition of works committee. A works committee is a statutory body formed under the Industrial Employment Standing Orders Act 1946. Now, when you look into history, the first labor management association typically started in 1947 with the passing of Industrial Disputes Act. Then what happened is that this, this Industrial Disputes Act uh, was the anchor. The act 
provides that in case of any industrial establishment in which 100 or more workers are employed on any day in the preceding 12 months, the appropriate government may be may by general or social order require to have a works committee. So the employees constitute uh, in the prescribed manner a works committee in the particular establishment and that, that was um, the mandate given by the act. Now when you look into specifically a works committee, a works committee as I have mentioned is a statutory body. When you look into works committee, you will understand it is designed to facilitate communication and promote harmonious relations between employers and employees in an establishment. And finally, as I've already mentioned, it is mandatory in establishments with more than 100 workers. So a council composed of both employers and employees convened to discuss matters of common interest concerning a factory, it could be concerning a plant or maybe a business policy, etc., not covered by the regular trade union agreements form part of this agenda of works committee. When you look into works committee, let's understand the nitty gritties of this works committee from the functional point of view. What are the different functions of the work committee? The first and the foremost one, we go systematically. We start with the key function being promoting the measures to secure and maintain amicable relations between employers and employers that is clearly established till date. Now, when you look into the other functions of work committee, we see that it discusses matters of common interest. It discusses matters of common concern. It could be say, something like working conditions. It could be something like safety, the welfare and the amenities, etc. The works committee specifically facilitates speedy redressal of grievances by bringing them to the notice of the management. When you look into other functions of the works committee, it is not an exhaustive list. You look into other functions, it has a continuous checking of labor law, a continuous check about work safety, health and safety regulations. The works committee typically takes radical steps when the employer does not actually respect the employee's rights. Also, the works committee gives current information about the company's achievements, the company's activities in the first place employment and everything that affects the company and the employees. So the right to jointly decide about the company and the manage, uh, you know, and manage together the entire paraphernalia of the company is what is the entire set of objective or function of the works committee. So there can also be other tasks that can be assigned to works committee or, uh, you know, potentially what they carry out would be in some other dimensions also, like let's say, uh, some of the examples which I can give is that they can investigate and respond to complaints from workers about uh, issues like workplace safety, issues like the health, issues like welfare and making you know recommendations for the corrective actions of the above issues. Or they can also ensure that the workplace meets the applicable legal requirements for uh, you know matters of health, matters of safety and welfare and they are adhered to, it's not just on paper. It is not just as a token or not just a part of, uh, you know, uh, to show off. Rather, they are actually concerned and actually going through and uh, meeting the applicable legal requirements of health, safety and welfare. There are other critical functions which they can do, like developing and implementing a plan to ensure the safety, health and welfare of workers in, in the workplace. Or they can assist in resolving disputes, let's say between workers, between employers and other stakeholders. Or even to a certain extent they can promote cooperation and collaboration between workers, employers and other stakeholders. And even uh, they can be instrumental in encouraging the adoption of best practices in the workplace. So these are some of the critical functions of the works committee if you dissect and see the works committee and that was the entire intention of this lecture. When you look into the composition of works committee you'll understand that uh, you know usually it consists of appointed management officials and elected labor members. The size of the corporation and the governing rules or agreements may affect the actual number of members and the election procedures. So when you look into the composition of works committee, you will see that 
there is equal representation from both the management and workers preferably with an odd number of members. So, this is what I have already tried to establish the, the case of equal representation. There should be equal say for both the parties, then only it will be more democratic in nature. That will be designed on a democratic setup. When you are looking into the, the works committee, management representatives are nominated by the employer while workers representatives are elected by workers themselves because we are not looking into a small number. When you are looking into the employer perspective, yes, there might be a few uh, but they can actually come up with uh, some policies, maybe some rotation policies whereby this nomination comes to every single of the individual based on maybe seniority or some other considerations for that matter. But when it comes to the, the actual representatives that are elected, uh, representatives of workers, they are actually elected because that, that shows the metal. They have to show their merit and they have to come up the ranks. So, this is how the management representatives are nominated. This is how the nomination or the selection or this is how the entire works committee is actually formed. When you look into the chairperson, the chairperson of the committee is selected from among the worker representatives and has alternate terms. So, so these are the critical factors associated with the composition of works committee. When you look into the works committee, let us understand whether this is beneficial. Why we are doing it? We have essentially tried to figure it out, but is there actual some benefit associated with, with this works committee? Let us see it now. When you look into advantages of work committee, you, we see that it enhances the communication and it improves employee engagement. You know, more and more people are uh, you know, part of the decision making process, they are more keen on, uh, you know, the decision making. As I have already mentioned in the previous lecture, there is a sense of ownership. More than that, there is a sense of uh, collective ownership, there is a sense of responsibility. You know, people are taking decisions on some accountability on basis of some responsibility. So, all these categorically improves the employee engagement. They feel that they are also part of the decision making. They try to give the best of their effort. It provides a platform to address the workplace issues and concerns. When you look into situations like works committee, it, it is a welcome change where, there, where people were not having an actual platform to exchange their concerns, exchange their grievances, exchange their ideas or to raise the concerns they were having. This essentially comes in as a saver. This comes in as a as a face saver whereby the, the, the employers can also say if, the, if there are some concerns you can always pitch it through the workers committee. The works committee will actually you know deliberate on this and will come out with an amicable solution which is neither harmful for the employer nor for the employee. So, getting into such decisions is not an easy concept if you do not have the uh, systems in place like works committee. These committees or such committees actually enhances as I have already mentioned communication and more than that it creates a potential platform for addressing the workplace issues. When you look into work, a works committee, it reduces industrial disputes and enhances corporation as a result. It, it fosters trust understanding and mutual respect between the workers and management. More than that, it enhances the morale when workers feel that they are appreciated, they are heard, their job satisfaction levels typically rise. There are research implications or research proofs associated with this contention. There could be, uh, you know, possible decrease in confrontations, you know, by proactively addressing problems. A forum for open discussions can lower the probability of the, the certain confrontations that otherwise do exist within the system. There could be, you know, typically uh, improved decision making process altogether, you know, including staff members and decision making procedures can actually result in more workable and efficient solutions. And finally, there could be critical aspects relating to the increased productivity. A peaceful work environment can actually, without doubt, increase output and efficiency in general. So, when you are looking into the works committee specifically, what we have to understand is that it fosters trust. I will take this uh, significant fourth point. It fosters trust and understanding. I have tried to elaborate on the trust factor. I have tried to 
portray something called as a distress loop. If you remember in one of the previous lectures, I'll repeat it here. See, the moment you have a works committee, you are actually bringing the worker also into picture. They are also getting the, the say within the company. Now, when they have the say within the company, the interesting part is that they are more inclined towards doing good. They are more, uh, you know, inclines towards performing better with a high productivity. Now, the, the, the important part is, let's say, if that trust, co co you know, quotient is not there, there is a certain distrust quotient that is, that is moving around, hovering around, then what happens is that there is a lack of trust, there is a distrust between the employee and the employer, there is sort of, you know, uh, skepticism, speculation, every time there are hidden agendas that are being propagated, there is lack of professionalism within the network, there are lack of understanding between uh, the, the needs of the employee, so are the, the, you know, lack of understanding between the needs of the employer. So all these aspects typically create a distrust environment, an environment of distrust. Now what happens? There is a distrust between the employee and the employer, there is a distrust that will be reciprocated in a similar way from the employer to employee. So what essentially happens is that there is a distress loop that is being created. Now this is what is controlled or curtailed to a greater extent by, you know, arrangements like works committee. So this is what uh, actually would be the true advantage of something like works committee. Now let's look into joint management councils in great detail. Joint management councils are voluntary bodies formed in an organization to address mutual concerns and improve the decision making process. It's an extension of the works committee in place. Let's understand this joint uh, management council from the joint consultation point of view. When you look into the joint management council, as I've already defined, it is a collaborative governance structure that actually brings several stakeholders together. It would be to supervise and administer a particular uh, project. It could be to, you know, uh, organize something important or maybe just to take some initiatives. So several industries, let's say including uh, corporate governance, natural uh, resource management, healthcare and education, you know, frequently employ this kind of council. So what we understand is that enhancing collaborative decision making guaranteeing diverse stakeholder representation and advancing something like open and effective management practices are typically the primary goals of joint management council. I repeat uh, these, uh, you know, critical words, enhancing collaborative decision making, you know, guaranteeing diverse stakeholder representation and to a certain extent advancing open and effective management practices are often the primary goals of this joint management council. When you look into joint management council, they are voluntary bodies formed in an organization to address mutual concerns and to improve the decision making process. So it is also at times known as the joint works council or also known as the joint consultation committee. So these are the same things. Different textbooks may use different words. You can have joint management council, you can have joint consultation committee, or you can have joint works council as well. Same thing. When you look into the function specifically, as we have seen in case of the works committee, there are typical functions associated with the joint management councils also. The first and the foremost one, undoubtedly, it encourages cooperation. It encourages participation and collaboration between employers and employees. When you look into uh, the, the entire uh, Joint Management Council, it, it is a facilitating body, a facilitator to actual collaboration between the two entities which are employers and employees respectively. The joint management councils or the joint consultation committees actually discuss issues related to production, issues related to productivity, quality and efficiency. And it is instrumental in enabling joint decision making and joint problem solving activities or going for joint problem solving. When you look into joint management councils or as I mentioned joint works council or joint consultation committee, there are multiple stakeholder involvement in this. Let's say it includes delegates from a range of organization. It includes 
public and commercial sector people. It includes community organizations and other pertinent parties. It makes certain that all stakeholders' interests and viewpoints are taken into account while making decisions. So when you are looking into the joint management councils for that matter, it works together to make decisions. You know, how it works is interesting. Majority vote or consensus are generally used to make decisions which promotes a feeling of accountability and shared responsibility. It encourages each member to engage and participate actively. When you're looking into the Joint Management Council, open and accountable you know, governance is typical. It follows precise guidelines and protocols to guarantee openness in all the business dealings which are being undertaken. It releases information and updates on a regular basis to inform all parties that are critically involved within the stakeholder limit. And when we look into joint management councils, we have also we have to also understand it as a conflict resolution mechanism. How? It creates procedures for handling and settling conflicts between the stakeholders or between the parties involved. It encourages negotiation and mediation in order to preserve the peace and harmony in the workplace. And if we further delve deeper into the joint management councils, we'll understand that there is strategic planning and oversight. It creates a long-term plan. It creates strategies. It creates strategies to fulfill the initiatives, aims and objectives. It keeps an eye on the development and performance, adjusting as needed to stay relevant and critical. So these are some of the essential functions of the Joint Management Council. Now we look into the composition of Joint Management Council. We have seen what benefits do Joint Management Councils or what functions do they do. Now let's look into the composition. When you look, when you discuss about the composition of Joint Management Council, we see that there is representation from both the management and workers. Typically, it happens in the two is to one ratio. Management representatives include top level executives and supervisors, while workers' representatives are elected by the workers themselves. When you look into such a setup, you will see that there is improved decision making. It includes staff members and decision making procedures that can result in more workable and efficient solutions. And ultimately, all these things lead to increased productivity without doubt. A peaceful work environment can definitely invariably increase output and efficiency in general. So when you look into the composition of Joint Management Council, management representatives include top level executives and supervisors while workers representatives are elected by workers themselves. Now let's look into the essence of today's lecture that is advantages of Joint Management Council. So why you actually need them? What are the advantages of joint management councils. Let's break it down from the first one. It enhances employee involvement and engagement in decision making. It typically promotes transparency and fairness in organization. How does it promote fairness in organization? Take a moment and ponder about this. You'll see that you know, more and more of representation that's happening. You know, there are people who are listening to you. There are people who are going to talk on behalf of you. That itself actually increases the fairness of the process. You know, what is an unfair process is when your side is not being heard. Many a time it happens, you know, many a time it happens that there is some issue that is coming up. Unilaterally, your manager makes a decision. Now, is it the right way? Sometimes it happens that you don't know what exactly is the problem. There might be some complaint that is coming against you. Maybe it is being triggered by a third party who is your competitor or who, who is detrimental to your growth. So we do not know what exactly is that has actually triggered the whole issue. But your manager hears the opinion, hardly shares it with you. It triggers an outburst which is unprecedented because there cannot be a actual transparency in board. The, the reality of the situation should be actually communicated to the stakeholders. If let's say X is complaining about Y, there is a side of X. There is a side that Y has. Typically, the manager should bring in the third perspective, which is often the reality, which is often the truth. So he or she should be able, is she or he able to bring in the third dimension? That is to, to cut a, a midway, cut a via media between these two opposing parties. Now, this will only happen 
when there is transparency this will only happen when there is actual intention to share to both the parties now when this is not there you need to have arrangements like joint management councils which will empower an employee that his idea or her idea is also being heard some issues what they are facing is also having a representation at the top management this is the vitality this underscores the criticality of joint management council let's look into other advantages typically it facilitates a sense of ownership and responsibility among employees when you look into sense of responsibility and ownership i have you know time and again mentioned about that when you look into the joint management councils it encourages innovation and cause in continuous improvement which we have also discussed not only that it has a certain purview of better communication it improves the communication frequent meetings facilitate communication between management and staff it is essential in increasing the cooperation you know a culture focused on teamwork is fostered through collaborative problem solving now this is vital collaborative when you are talking about the setups or engagements like joint management council we we have to understand that there is a collaborative problem solving that can happen through such networks or through such establishments there is always employee empowerment that happens to be an advantage of joint management council a greater sense of involvement is there a greater sense of involvement in the decision making process is there among the staff members which actually boosts morale and increases the job satisfaction and finally there could be proactive problem solving i already mentioned about the collaborative problem solving there there are situations where possible problems can be resolved before they become very serious disputes so this is what joint management council is all about I've, i i will just take two to essence or two takeaways from this lecture collaborative problem solving and proactive problem solving why we need the joint management council i have tried to emphasize on the need that there is some body there is some body which actually puts your representation into the higher management that is taken care of your voice is heard you are essentially given the required psychological safety but what about the actual problem when you look into the arrangements like works committee or joint management council or joint management committee what you understand essentially is that there is a collaborative problem solving collaboration between the employer and employee collaboration between all the necessary stakeholders that otherwise would stay indifferent and also there is proactive problem solving the moment there are some arrangements like works committee or you know joint management council etc there could be a proactive problem solving means that let us solve it now itself so that it does not go ahead and you know turn out to be a big dispute which will take away which will eat away a lot of you know, the time lot of the cost lot of labor and lot of the resources otherwise the company can utilize otherwise the organization can utilize in a better way that's all from today's class we'll see with greater details in another class till then take care bye bye